Hi, and welcome to a new episode. Earlier, you saw me struggle to get running water back into the building, and even struggle more to find out where the water that ran out of the building was running to. In this episode, the time has come to install some basic sanitation for the first time ever in this two and a half century old house. Since I didn't really have the time to pour a proper concrete floor, I decided that it would be best to place the shower and the sink on the small concrete slab in the barn. This part of the barn used to be the workshop of the previous owner of the house, who was a wheelwright, so who made things out of wood. To make room, we had to remove the old electrical motor that was mounted to the wall. This electrical motor was used to power an enormous bandsaw and the lathe via belts that were connected to an axis with wheels that was suspended on a couple of beams. Simon designed an amazing frame to help with removing the heavy axis. It's funny how this seems to go quite smoothly in the time lapse, while in reality it was a real struggle. Anyway, after removing the axis, the only thing that was still in the way was the enormous cil- single cylinder stationary engine. This engine hasn't been, hadn't been used for a while, as it was covered in sawdust from the machines and it was missing its cylinder head. I later found the cylinder head in a box in the second house, so I hope to get it, be able to get it running one day again. So here you see us tidying up the area before assembling the second hand shower cubicle that I bought before going to France. In the remainder of the video you'll see us install the rest of the sanitation. To spice things up I've tried something new this time. My friends Simon and Ben have composed some wonderful music using GarageBand on my computer and I find that these tunes sound amazing during my time lapses. I'm very curious to hear what you think about these musical masterpieces, so feel free to leave your opinion in the comments. So an update on the work that we've done so far, um, we've installed the water hoses with the faucets, uh, we've installed the boiler for the hot water, and from here onwards it's sort of finished already, we have a sink with hot water and cold water. We have a lovely light for when doing the dishes. We've installed the shower, which works, although it's not as steady as you would like it to be. And it's also right underneath the beam that's uh, about to come down. But nothing's perfect in life. And then here is where we need to do more work. Um, there's this strange uh, faucet um, that's supposed to be the uh, connection of the toilet when we're ready to install the actual toilet um, and I didn't have the right lid to put on this uh, uh, connecting bit but I did have the, the faucet that, uh, that fit so I decided to turn that on and now I decide and after I've done it I thought it would mo- might be handy to fill up the porta potty that we use as a toilet at the moment. So 
it's quite convenient like this and uh, it, it works as well so there's water coming out um, and next thing we're going to do is build a, a toilet space because this uh, is it a pedestal is that what you call it I don't know so we put the porta potty on and when we're ready to install the toilet we're going to put the toilet on there um, and we have to make it like a small room around it with a door so that you have a little privacy when using the toilet. Then we have the, the sink here that's quite sad looking at the moment. Um, it's really the same story with the toilet connection. Um, I had to make sure that I was able to close the water circuit so I in already installed this and when we made the toilet space we'll be able to put it up like this. Um, and then the water exit we can hook up to, uh, to that bit over there. Uh, so here we have the boiler. It's electric. Uh, it's a 100 liter tank. And it works. Yeah, that's what I can say about it. And um, over here we have the pile of somewhat usable wood. That will source a few boards from to build the, the toilet room. Um, right here is the door that we pulled from the uh, pulled from the living room and we'll use that as a toilet door. So yeah that's it. That's the next step building a toilet room. Okay. So what I did until now is um, make a floor I fixed it to the bit of concrete that was there and it's quite sturdy. Um, and I've started putting up the work, uh, the door frame and I fixed it with these uh, pieces of wood across um, to make sure it's level next step is that I'm going to fix something to the wall in order to make two frames for the walls. Um, but I haven't really put much thought into the height. I just thought I'd, I'd make it 220 centimeters. Um, but that's the exact height where I put up the electricity box over there for the lighting. So I'm going to cut off a piece over here, make it a bit shorter. Uh, so that I'll stay underneath the electricity box.
So I've now put the door in, and uh, I'm glad it fits. As you can see, the door is not really uh, straight anymore. Um, and also, it's well, it doesn't really close easily. I have to lift up the door, and by lifting up the door, move the entire frame in order to close it. So I have to uh, keep that into account when screwing on the boards. Um, and after I screw it on the walls, that movement should be gone because uh, it's quite wobbly still. Um, but that should be gone when I'm done. Now that I've run out of tunes that sound fitting for the images, it's time to address the title of this video. When I was at the notary for the signing of the purchase of this house, the sellers, the notary and myself were having a bit of a laugh about the fact that I, a random young Dutch guy, wanted to buy the old, somewhat dilapidated house that their grandparents had lived in. At one point, one of the sellers even started mentioning all the facilities that the house lacked. No kitchen, no bathroom, no toilet, no heating, she said. As it was a warm day in May, I quickly responded that I didn't need any heating. However, after a few days of camping in the garden, I realized that having a toilet and a bathroom would have been nice. Especially since I was planning on having a lot of friends over for the summer. So in the time before their arrival, this improvised sanitation setup was the most I could do. Now that I'm looking at the video and recording the voiceover, I wonder whether I would be right in calling my barn a bathroom from now on. I mean, it has a sink, a shower, and even some sort of a toilet. But, on the other hand, bathrooms are usually more closed off than this barn. And maybe more importantly, the sanitation is also usually connected to sewage, which mine isn't. I guess that ultimately begs the question, do you judge a bathroom by what it has, or by what it doesn't have? Anyway. I wouldn't want you to worry about that question for too long. This sanitation setup is just a temporary thing for this first phase. I'm planning on pouring an actual concrete floor the coming summer to build a bathroom on. And after that bathroom, I think maybe two or three more will follow in the future. And boy, will they have sanitation. But more on that later. Unfortunately, for now, this is all I have for you. In my next video, I'll start cleaning up the roof in an effort to make it somewhat rainproof. Which, as you'll see, is not easy. Hope to see you next time and have a nice day.